Um, my name is Steve Lepke. I'm an engineer, engineering manager at Protocol Labs that gets to work with a lot of folks on the LibP2P team there. Um, I live in the Pacific Northwest of the United States. Uh, home is in Seattle, but uh, very excited to be here in Istanbul with y'all. So thank you. Good times. Um, so I get the privilege of working with a lot of uh, incredible maintainers. If you've been around the project, you probably recognize some of these faces. Um, unfortunately, for a variety of reasons, many of them are unable to make it. Um, but are, we are thankful to have Sakun and Chad here, who both will be presenting. Uh, and also just want to quickly pause to give up uh, to applaud for uh, Prithvi. Prithvi has done a lot of the organizing behind the scenes. He unfortunately couldn't make it, but he will be watching this. So let's give him a round of applause. Great, so uh, LibP2P Day is intended to be a watering hole for the LibP2P community, and our hopes and goals for uh, today are fewfold and for this event. One is, let's get refreshed. Um, encourage and problem solve together by sharing demos, deep dives, talking about our current challenges, hopes, et cetera, for the project, and certainly doing some looking ahead for the project in 2024. Um, also, we want this to be a time where we get to build relationships. Um, you know, we've, there's a lot of events going on in Istanbul today. I'm assuming we'll have people coming in and out, which is great. But the people that are here have like chosen to be here because they care about the project amongst all the stuff going on. So let's take advantage of that. Um, so bring it in close, let's be cozy. And then during, during breaks, like be sure to engage with others, find out how they're using LibP2P, what they're hoping to see happen with the project. But let's really take advantage of this relational time. Um, so to, to start here, um, if, you, if you're new to LibP2P, haven't really heard of it before, and you just came because you're interested, could you raise your hand? We have anyone in that camp? All right, good stuff. Yeah, so I'm um, glad that's the case. You know, please feel free to come up to me or many of the others who will be speaking or anyone else. We'd love to talk more and hear about your, your journey. And for those who have been around for the project for a while, let's have everyone start with their hands raised. Okay. Um, so let's lower your hand if you came to the project just this last year, if this was your first year. So we can, we can drop. Okay, how about uh, 2021? Anyone, was that their first year? Okay. Uh, we'll keep going down. How about 2020? This was a significant launch with Gossip Sub. All right, so we got a, we got a few here still, still standing. Uh, okay, 2019, this is when the Ethereum 2.0 network specifi specification finally got merged. All right, a few here. Uh, 2017, when Rust P 2 p came out with Parity. Okay, so we don't, we're not dating that far back yet. Maybe we'll have some, I, I know there are some long timers that will be showing up later that uh, hit that far back. But um, anyway, we've got a good breadth of experience and history with the project. And again, I hope people can take advantage of that. Um, yeah, great. So in terms of the schedule today, uh, there's actually a lot that has, has come in, which we're, we're excited about. Um, af after this, I'll just talk sh briefly about the um, LPDP in 2023. Uh, Daniel Norman will be sharing about the Universal Connectivity app and, and what you know how that's bootstrapping developers. Um, and sorry, I'm, yeah, I can't see everything. Yeah, Doug will be um, sharing about uh, uh, doing things in, in Wasm with Rust. Sorry, with WebRTC. Um, and we've got, yeah, Auto, Sakun will be talking about Autonat. Uh, then there will be a discussion uh, around libp2p in .NET. And, and again, I, sorry, I should say before I get into all this, because this is coming across blurry, the, uh, we've got the QR code where you want, if you want to see the exact schedule, and also the libp2p specs repo discussion 531, or 591, I should say, has, um, has all the details. Uh, yeah, so a couple more talks until lunch. Then after lunch, um, yeah, uh, Guru's going to be giving a talk on Waku. And then uh, Juan and Raul will be sharing about, um, they'll be describing upcoming plans for the project, uh, including how we form a foundation and uh, steward the project with public goods funding and supporting, to, to, sorry, to support development and growth of the project afterwards. So um, that'll be an important one to have people hit on. Um, we'll do a collaborative group brainstorming uh, session for a little bit just to collect some initial ideas of where we think we need to see the project heading in 2024. And then a series of uh, lightning talks um, and, and quick demos. So should be a fun day. If, if you're inspired by something or you, you want to get up and talk for a minute, like we have flexibility here. This is a, um, yeah, we, 
we can be fluid. But that, that's, the, that's the plan. Um, in general, I'm going to be sticking to the schedule, but I want to make sure there's time for people to ask questions. So we will be running a mic around. Given that this is being recorded and put on YouTube, just ask that you actually speak into the mic so they can get that. Or if for some reason you're a speaker and someone asks a question and it wasn't on a mic, just restate it so that it gets captured. Um, but I'll be running around to hopefully help with that. Cool. So um, before jumping into more uh, the technical talks, I want to just take a moment to celebrate all that the LibPDP community has accomplished this, uh, this last year across the board, across many different teams. Uh, so a few high-level network stats, and if you, this, some of this is maybe familiar from the uh, PL Summit that was done on Monday, but we we've, can now observe over 250,000 weekly active uh, nodes in the IPFS amino DHT, another 12,000 Ethereum 2.0 uh, consensus clients, um, three, over 3,000 uh, Filecoin storage providers and 13,000 Polkadot par uh, parachain nodes. So great growth uh, across those networks this year. Um, we now have over 10 libp2p implementations um, that are they're getting a that are active and getting commits, and over 20 networks that we can observe uh, that are using libp2p. Uh, last year, we articulated in, in LibPDP Day 2022 some tenants for the project. And these, these tenants were really formed in kind of the foundation for features and initi initiatives that implementation teams were going to be taking on in their roadmaps in 2023. Uh, we were generally trying to prioritize filling these gaps um, in our work and the things that you maybe would hope and expect that LibPDP is secure, stable, well specified, and performant. And so much of the work that happened this last year rolled into those categories. We were inspired by programming languages and browser, uh, pro yeah, modern programming language and browser projects, right? The way they have extensive benchmarking and test suites. Um, the, the, the hope here is to give an overwhelming sense that when someone comes to the project of, hey, look at how rigorously they take the quality of their project, like, why wouldn't I use this? Um, so it's partly for that and also as we look at those projects in terms of browsers and programming languages, that oftentimes these tools are some of the mechanisms that enable them to scale to have many contributors, which is where we hope to get to with uh, libp2p. And good progress was made on this this past year. Um, we now have different libp2p implementations uh, testing against each other for interoperability, um, for performance, and, and having implementation-specific metrics to really deep dive on how they're performing in production. So with interoperability testing there on the left, uh, we're testing across, and each of these really warrants their own talk, and many of them have accompanying blog posts, but just real quick, on interoperability testing, we're testing across different libp2p implementations and versions across transports, their security uh, channel, and their different muxers to ensure we don't break compatibility. At this point, on any libp2p release, we're doing over 431 pairwise uh, comparisons and also doing, and this is with six implementations right now and in different runtime environments, like in a browser or with Wasm, et cetera. So it's, um, you know, the, the, the foundation is there and many libp2p implementations have jumped onto this to ensure that they have compatibility. Uh, on performance benchmarking, we've got a number of uh, implementations that have jumped into this and we're comparing things like the time it takes to establish a connection, upload and download time, and then benchmarking that against something like uh, iperf and just like using straight HTTP with no libp2p on top of it. Um, so we can really keep ourselves honest about the performance of, of libp2p. And, and like I said, uh, various implementations have really been upping their observability within their implementation themselves so they can spot issues happening in production. Uh, and again, this, just, this wasn't just done in isolation by one team. Multiple implementation teams have been contributing to this effort, which is great to see. Um, in terms of ac activity in our GitHub repos, we, we like to look at uh, active contributors. We really want to be filtering out people that are, drive, that are doing drive-bys. Uh, and so our definition of active is like in a given month, um, you know, somebody that had at least three events of this particular type. So if, if, if that's issues, that's creating or commenting on issues or PRs creating or commenting on them. And we also look specifically at the specs repo because we really see that as the heart of libp2p. Um, and as you can see over the last two years, pretty, you know, steady um, growth across those three dimensions. And, you know, year to date, uh, again, 228 unique 
uh, contributors on issues, 136 in PRs, and 34 in the specs themselves. And I should say this is only within the libp2p organi GitHub organization itself. There are many, there are, you know, there are multiple libp2p implementations that live outside of that organization, and, but, and those stats aren't included here. You know, another way we tend to look at this too is across kind of repo types. There are a set of repos that are very much for the community, things like the universal connectivity, the blog, docs, website, um, and specs. Um, and this is kind of the active users for those. And then across a few of our implementations that are, again, in the libp2p organization. So like I said, uh, libp2p takes specs to heart, and we saw many specifications authored and then implemented uh, in various implementations. A few examples, WebRTC Direct is now in JS and Rust and Go libp2p. Uh, WebRTC itself, which is different than WebRTC Direct, I know there's some confusion around the names at points, uh, is in JS libp2p and currently in progress on Go libp2p. We had good specs on libp2p with HTTP and auto v2, uh, autonet v2 is in, in progress, and also some good improvements on gossip sub uh, that were done by Anton and Tangui. Uh, so this has led to uh, a host of implementation improvements over the last year. And again, this isn't exhaustive. Um, this, is, this was only a subset. We'll make sure next year to get more community input to make sure we get broader uh, representation. But um, yeah, lots, lots of releases and just general core maintenance, which we take to heart um, for these projects. Uh, but things like some new transports, like I said, in Go P2P. Uh, Rust now has quick, uh, like a first class uh, quick implementation, and you know, is a better participant in the Kademlia DHTs. Uh, JS, you know, where we're really pushing browser connectivity, um, got the browser to browser connectivity happening, uh, along with a lot of important refactoring, which I'll mention in a moment. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be hearing from uh, Alexi later about .NET in JSLPTP, so I won't talk about anything there, but JVM uh, had their 1.0 release, including having a quick transport and some great uh, hole punching and relay improvements from Nimlin PTP. Some, yeah, on the community side, uh, you know, there was, I think, more libp2p engagement on hackathons, uh, and we saw some cool projects from that. At a HackFS, um, there, yeah, that was where some of the Wasm plugin app came about. The decentralized, there's a decentralized video streaming app and added file sharing to the universal connectivity. And I should say just maybe the universal connectivity app itself, which Daniel will be talking about shortly, was a bit of a rallying point um, as well. And the encode hackathon uh, saw a nice decentralized drawing application that was added, and some good discussions for the community about what truly is the core of libp2p and what a minimal libp2p implementation looks like. Um, so that was, I think, well articulated, and it was great to see you know uh, the community show some love towards JS libp2p for all the refactoring work that had gotten there. So that's that tweet. That's that tweet in the top right hand corner. And along the way, a lot of um, documenting and publishing about the work that's been done. So various blog posts, particularly going into some of the features that I breezed over, and just you know, announcing uh, and giving recaps of some of the events that the community has been involved in. So uh, yeah, great, great work over 2023. Thank you to all involved for making this, making this happen. Um, before transitioning, I just want to give a quick plug that, again, later on in the day, we will do a, gre a group collaborative roadmap uh, discussion. This is, there will, there's a Google Doc where we'll be entering things in parallel. Um, if you want to pull that up now, please feel free to, so that if you're listening to various talks and it triggers things for people, you can just start writing those things down. Again, you don't have to, but just letting you know that it's coming. We'll have some prompts like libp2p would be better if, and asking people to fill that in. We could function better as a community if. Um, so again, if if these talks are going to spur things for you, feel free to be already jotting these things down in that in that document, and we'll do a more group exercise later on. And with that, again, just want to say thank you. Please feel free to stop me at, uh, at the break. And uh, with that, we'll turn it over to Daniel to talk about universal connectivity. Thank you.